Hello, I'm Eric Ford, and this is my series on leading from your strengths. And today I'd like to talk about managing upward. And in particular, I'd like to offer what I call a typology of bosses. This is far from exhaustive, and I could have gone a slightly different direction where I simply talked about introverted versus extroverted bosses. And in the future, what I may do is talk about bosses in the framework of the Enneagram or some other personality test. With that said though, let's go to the most common types of bosses. And I adapted this from a book by, uh, and I apologize in advance, Gonzog Dufour called Managing Your Manager. And I liked it rather much well, and it was good. Uh, in his book, he starts with the bully. I'm not sure that's where I would have started, but it is something that we really see quite often, probably too often in the workplace to be candid. Uh, this, you heard, may have heard me in another lecture talking about, I hate surprises and needs to be in control. Again, I don't mind bad news. I do mind surprises. If we know something's gone wrong, I shouldn't hear about it after it breaks. I should hear about it while we have a chance to fix it would be better. Uh, bullies are often prone to unexpected outbursts of anger, often un without reason to be candid. They use fear to intimidate. They'll talk about their ability to fire you, have somebody else do your job, those sorts of things. They believe on some level that berating someone makes them look good. Never quite understood that, but it does seem to be something that often happens. Uh, with that said, they tend to be fairly good performers. They often deliver good results. They have good self-confidence. And then sometimes they're actually better when things are worse. They're good at handling crises because they're under stress already. And it's a strange feature. Uh, people tend to respect the bully, especially up the line, because they seem to be powerful. Uh, I should also mention, and I'm, I, this is often the third rail of these sorts of discussions, when you talk about male versus female bosses, uh, tough men are considered tough and hard, drive, hard driving. Uh, tough women are often not viewed as positively, and I will not say the words that are often accompanied, that sort of thing, but there's a definitive double standard in how this sort of tough, no holds barred, uh, over the top management is perceived differently among the genders, between the genders. So it's something to be cognizant of uh, in the workplace. So how do we deal with this? How do we cope? Well, first, don't take it personally. They do it to everybody. It's a them problem, not a you problem. Try to find the humor, and this often occurs later, I must confess, uh, after the fact, but there's usually some humor in it. Realize it's temporary. These people do tend to go up and down, and they'll often have high points that accompany them as well. For your part, as I mentioned, avoid surprises wherever possible and keep them informed on in a real time sort of way. Build alliances for them, by the way. Give them other re reasons to believe that you're a value, valuable asset and not something that can be singled out. Uh, that's a very powerful strategy for bullies. So, how to manage your bully. One thing you can do is the task they don't want to. They appreciate that. Deliver mean, meaningful things. Be self-controlled and subtle. Don't be a yes person. Don't let them walk over you. You know, the one way to get a bully is to punch them in the nose. You know, you got to be able to push back. So, the next type of boss, according to this typology, is the good boss. This is the sort of easygoing person who never seems to be flustered, is generally present, 
They're very predictable. You can see it coming a mile away. With that said, they tend not to be very creative. In fact, they were probably hired because they weren't gonna cause a lot of work for the boss that manages them. Uh, they're boring. Let's face it, what, that's what they are. They also do tend to accept people as they are, so they're not very driven. They're not trying to get their unit to the top, typically. And this is an interesting feature. Uh, there's another philosophy called the Peter Principle. The Peter Principle states that everybody rises to their own level of incompetence. And there are a great many good managers who exhibit the Peter Principle where they're very kind and gentle hearted. They're pretty good at what they do, but it's pretty clear this is the last promotion they're ever going to have. So how to work with this sort of person? Again, this is consistency. Also, they hate office politics. They don't want any part of that. Uh, they're not likely to give you challenging or interesting assignments. With that said, they're not adverse to you going off and doing things on your own. Therefore, you should be able to take some initiative and feel confident that that will be allowed to happen. Uh, they're not great networkers. So there is an opportunity for you to move up, but it'll probably mean moving out of the current column you're in on the organizational chart if you want to succeed. Uh, they're willing to do the dirty work themselves, but if you'll pick up some of that, you'll be valued greatly. What do they want you to do? Risk management. These people are risk adverse. Don't do it. Uh, they don't like phonies. They don't like people they perceive to be climbing the ladder. And you wanna be the person they can count on to consistently perform and say yes. The star. Um, in business, and there's actually a lot of empirical research supporting this, narcissists are wildly successful and something like 80% of the Fortune 500 CEOs are in effect narcissists. And these are stars. These are the people who want to go to the next level. They like the drama. They like the big show. They want to claim all the credit. If your heart soars when somebody says, and I wanna thank all the little people that made this possible, go work for a star. Um, they want action. They want everything moving forward. We've got to hit our numbers. We've got to hit our due dates, on and on and on. They also like to challenge the status quo to some extent. And that means that they may not be managing up as effectively as they might. They're ruffling feathers, and that's fine as long as they're succeeding, but the day the success stops, watch out, there's gonna be a purge. So there are a few things. While the star is on their way up, enjoy the ride, embrace the drama. Look on dispassionately from the stage wings if you're capable. Take pride in being part of the team. Try to make sure you get some credit here and there where possible. Right. Except you won't always be able to keep up. You're never going to make all of their deadlines. That's part of the point of how they set things up. Uh, try to steer rather than control. Again, these people are the ones that are less likely to take your suggestions. So be precise and also able to respond quickly. So even though they didn't take your suggestion, you may want to go ahead and work outside of them somewhat to make sure that when your idea is ready and they need it, it can be implemented in short order. So what to do with the star? Be patient and be a good listener. They want to talk about themselves. You know, it's the old joke my mother used to tell enough about me, what do you think about my hair? That sort of stuff. Uh, ask for help. They want to be viewed as saviors as well. And even though you know what needs to be done, let them tell you the obvious and feel good about themselves. All right.
The parents, we see this a fair amount as well. They tend to flourish in low stakes environments. They are also typically promoted from within. At some point they were parented, somebody cared about them, the poor little person who couldn't quite do it on their own. So we nurtured them, nurtured them, nurtured them. And now we're at the point where if we don't promote them, we look like idiots. And so now we've promoted somebody into a position where maybe they're capable, maybe they aren't. Uh, they're not in the book, he says they're found in finance. That's not been my experience. Uh, finance doesn't have a lot of parents. Human resources are parents by definition almost. Uh, they like to provide a lot of guidance, whether or not they actually know anything. They're going to provide you guidance anyway. There's something called the Dunning-Kruger effect. If you want to go look that up online, uh, maybe that's today's test question, by the way. What is the Dunning-Kruger effect? Uh, they're always available for answers and storytelling. They love telling others what to do. And oh, by the way, you're a child. Your suggestions are treated as such. So how to manage the parent? Well, you almost have to parent them in reverse. You have to set clear limits. You have to express these limits in clear and unequivocal sorts of ways. You need to take advantage of the coaching and training they offer, but realize that you probably need to be reciprocating in kind and that sort of stuff. The geek, this may be me in some regards, uh, not totally lacking self-awareness. Uh, this is often what we might call a technocrat, somebody who's been advancing because of their command of the technical systems that we operate with. And they often lack people skills, as you can imagine. Again, I'm not lacking self-awareness in this front. Uh, they might even be autistic to some extent. But as we live in a, a world that relies more and more on computer technology, information systems, these people are really having their uh, day in the sun, if you will. They too are often promoted from within. They don't interview well, so it's hard for them to move around. Uh, they are hyper rational, so they want to rely on their expertise. Uh, one of the jokes I once heard is somebody asked, uh, tell us about your emotional intelligence and the geek responded, I actually prefer to start with actual intelligence and move from there. So they didn't do well in the emotional intelligence question, let's put it that way. But there's something to be said for actually starting with actual intelligence. Uh, again, they love logic and analysis, they don't suffer things where, gee, it feels good, we ought to do it because everybody else is doing, none of that's going to sell with them. So what does the geek want? They want effective and concise and regular communication that's highly structured and generally structured the same. Uh, these are people who are fairly good at email, and there are not a lot of people, in my opinion, who are good at email. But this is one of the few groups, if you can become effective in your email, it can be very powerful. Uh, if you really want stuff from them, it's valuable to get them out of the office, even if it's for a cup of coffee or lunch. Uh, it's worth learning some of their technical skills, even if you're not planning on mastering it. And mastering their technical skills may be near impossible, so don't think that's the route to the end. Right. So other things, know yourself. What can you handle? Do you have a thick skin? In other words, this thick skin is non-trivial these days because I would actually say, while we haven't become a less civil society, uh, people are on pins and needles. There's lots of triggers. There are lots of people who do not have thick skins and to the extent they can impose that on the rest of us, they have. And so many, many people are at this point always looking for something wrong in what you say. So be careful in this regard. The other thing about yourself, is this job a stepping stone or a long-term position? And I won't say that that's going to fundamentally change who you are, but it might change the way you interact with some people. 
And that's a fairly narcissistic sort of approach, by the way, is using people for when they're valuable and then ignoring them when they're not. With that said, 80% of Fortune 500 CEOs are what? Narcissists. And within yourself, and again, humor is another one of those things that's sort of gone out of our workplace because of cancel culture and other uh, features. But in some ways, you need to be able to laugh at yourself. With that said, those are the sorts of types of managers that you need to manage and a few strategies in general, as well as targeted toward those managers 